Hello, and welcome back. On the last episode, we went to hang, uh, hang out with uh, Melody, and uh, I was there, uh, as in the robot AI, it would, as in the AI, spelled AI, uh, and uh, we played that well. I and Melody were playing hide and seek. Then we started drawing with uh, Melody, which we saw some pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting, interesting art. It was definitely a reference or two made in there. And then uh, Dai came along and joined in on the art making as well, which is what she is currently complaining about because obviously we are not happy to see them. But yeah. Anyway. Melody quickly moved behind me in order to shield herself from Dai. Dai, what do you want? Just checking to see how my favorite contestant is progressing in this round of the deletion game. I think I'm doing pretty well, personally. I'm your favorite. Don't get too sappy on me. Statistically, you have been isolated, which has led to you as having the highest probability of winning every round of the deletion game. So, I know where I'm putting my money. So what you're saying is we should lose on purpose. Dai was looking curiously at Melody, currently huddled behind me, for jumping forward to scare Melody. <laughs> Boo. Melody screamed and ran out of her quarters crying. That's not going to be good when Fire Man finds out. Was that really necessary? I'm not called the destructive artificial intelligence for nothing, you know. Well, we found out what the D stands for. Your name is actually, uh, actually an acronym. I mean... Yep, but I prefer Die. It seems appropriate, doesn't it? Die. Die. Yep, I definitely had that proves your point. Anyway, she heaved a satisfied sigh. There's nothing I enjoy more than a good play on words. Okay. Did you call yourself Die? Heavens no. I'm not that vain. Shizuka coined the term when I was first activated. They were trying to think of a way to differentiate me from I. I still worry that there's no dif differentiating. To hear them tell it, they felt it was unfair for I to be associated with my anti-social behavior. Yeah. What a bunch of bores. If I had a choice, I'd call myself Alice. Why Alice? Really? That's so, well, normal. Why Alice? I don't know. I just feel like an Alice. And I can see Alice working. Uh, you don't really feel now, do you? I'll have you know that I do have a synthetic emotional response program. Sure, I disengage it, but that's not the point! If it's not the point, then you don't have a point. I simulated looking uh, at a wristwatch. Oh, would you look at the time? Well, my hair isn't going to wash itself. Toodles! You don't need to wash your hair. You're an artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence. Just as quickly as Dai appeared, she shifted back to I. My apologies. It's not your fault, I. Well, eh, I, I would say don't apologize. No, that's not your fault. I wouldn't say it's her. It is, I wouldn't say it is her fault, but I wouldn't say not. I wouldn't say that. I should check on Melody and notify her father of the mishap. Please excuse me. That's fair. I bowed and left me alone in Melody's and Vladimir's quarters. Well, I guess I should return to my own quarters. I left their quarters and headed back to my, uh, my own. Still curious about the mysterious pocket watch, I sat on the bed and pulled out uh, pulled the pocket watch out of uh, in front of my right pants pocket and looked at it. There uh, has to be a reason why this was with my parents' research. I lay back in my bed, frustrated. If only my parents were still around, I'm sure they would have known what to do with this. No, I don't think they would. The next day. When I woke up on Friday, for a moment I forgot where I was. The ceiling was still foreign to me, and I was too groggy from sleep uh, for my sur uh, surroundings to truly sink in. The deletion game was just a horrible nightmare, right? Uh, 
I'd get up and see my parents sitting in the com uh, common rooms and my father would offer a choice comment how, uh, about how lazy I was. That wasn't going to happen though. After a few minutes, I began uh, to come to my senses. Alright, time to get out of bed. I have work to do. Oh, I've got work to do. I dragged my feet out of the warmth of my blankets and placed them firmly onto the floor next to my bed. Body, up go. I sighed and uh, begrudgingly got up. It seemed my brain was still well, it still wasn't functioning at full capacity just yet. I made my way out of my quarters and headed towards the bridge. On the way there, I ran into Shizuka in the hallway. Good morning. Surprised you're so optimistic. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Shizuka. What happened to you? Did you die in your sleep? Apparently so. We may have. Who knows? I'm not. Uh, I'm just not yet, uh, yet awake yet. That's all. Where are you going? I'm off to the bridge, going to see how the captain is doing this morning. I'm also on my way there. She had I come summon me. Ugh, more work. Well, we are losing people, so you have to cover more ground. It's way too early for work. It's. As Shizuka finished voicing her displeasure, we finally reached the bridge. At the center, at the center stood the captain, waiting exact. Uh, at the center stood, uh, at the center stood the captain, waiting expectantly for Shizuka's arrival. Shizuka, excellent. I have concerns regarding our navigation. Good morning, Captain. Oh, hello. I've heard that you've been assisting the crew with their tasks over the last few days. May as well. I've been trying to help out where I can. It's great to see our newest crew member showing initiative. Keep up the good work. Um, Captain, your voice is... My voice? Yeah, I thought so as well. Yes, yeah, sorry, I completely forgot. This happened before you were conscious. Just after we picked you up, there was an accident while I was helping Katashi with some chores. I was harvesting tomato plants when I was stung by a bee in the throat. The Vogel's father said the swelling and its effects on my voice could take a few weeks before returning to normal. I'm assuming this is just a voice actor mishap, maybe? Uh, but okay, then, I suppose. This is what your voice normally sounds like. Captain, I uh, smiled warmly. It's nice to finally be back to normal. Well, Captain, I really like your regular voice. The Captain uh, stood firm, but I could see her uh, forced to hide smile. Wait, bees? Yes, you heard me right. Space bees. Space bee, okay. That's the title. The Captain's uh, smiles faded as a stern demeanor returned. Moving on to the subject at hand, the Everett is currently approaching a recently imploded superstar, which has formed into a black hole. Is this going to be a problem? Let me just double check for you, Captain. It definitely sounds like it would be a, a problem. Shizuka sat down at the navigation terminal for quite some time. How are you traveling since your headaches? Uh, how are you traveling since your be uh, space bees stung your throat? Uh, you know, we can do what we only can do. I'm doing a little bad now. That's good to hear. I've also heard that you started looking into your parents' research. Is that going well? Not really. We found a pocket watch. That's about it. Though we shouldn't really tell you about it. Probably. Is. It's definitely something. I'm still trying to wrap my head around why my, uh, what my parents were attempting to do. Captain. Report, Shizuka. The black hole in question has an event horizon that's only a few kilometers wide. So it shouldn't pose much of a problem. Keyword is shouldn't. That being said, our current trajectory will send us close to it. Close enough that we may experience its gravitational field. Will being that close result in any further casualties? If we can avoid entering the event horizon itself, there shouldn't be any casualties. Again, keyword is shouldn't, but I'm not really expecting that to work in our favor. As of right now, however, we still have the opportunity to change our trajectory and avoid the situation altogether. If we were to change our route, 
How much time would be added to the estimated mission duration? Let's see. According to I's projections, roughly 71 years. And we've already spent, well, you've already spent several generations here. Or at least more hmm. than one. That won't do. We'll have to take our chances with the black hole's gravitational field. Will you be able to navigate through it? I've never done it before, although I have successfully navigated through them in training simulations. What if we end up in a pod, and then we go through the air, the black hole gets them back in time, and we are just some sort of never-aging being? Well, let's hope that your gaming skills come in handy. We can't afford to add extra time to the mission with our current resource crisis. Wait, we're going to stay on course towards the black hole? Well, yes, but we're just going to go next to it, not into it, silly. What if we need to go into it? What if the key going into it is the key thing? Isn't that uh, still incredibly dangerous? If we don't take this calculated risk now, there's no way we'll survive to see the end of this mission. The risk may be calculated, but how good are you at math? I guess. If you were a betting person, would you rather have a 100% chance of death or a 50% chance? A hundred, because at least you know what you're getting. Well, 50%, of course. Excellent choice. Shizuka, set our course. When will we be getting close enough to experience any gravitational anomalies? Roughly a week, give or take a few days. Roughly a week, give or take a few days. Roughly a week, give or take a few days. Okay. Roughly a week, give or take a few days. Okay. That was, that was unexpected. This could be, I don't know if that's an, uh, a voice acting thing or or or, a, or, a, or if it was like a, a, it's supposed to be a time thing. Wonderful. Keep me posted. Okay, Kimiko's not going to do the same thing. Can do, Captain. Nope. Okay. The conversation with Shizuka concluded, and the captain uh, turned to address me. What are your plans for the day? Uh, apparently the deletion game. Uh, let's learn about Yoshiki. We've seen you a bit. I haven't seen you, Yoshiki. I was planning on going to see if Yoshiki required any help. That is a fantastic idea. I know that he's currently completing some routine upkeep on some of the consoles in the engineering bay. He could probably use an extra set of hands. Okay. Great, I'll head over there now. I descended from the bridge and made my way towards the engineering bay. When I arrived at the engineering bay, I couldn't see Yoshiki anywhere. I immediately set about searching for him. Yoshiki. Yoshiki. Marco. Polo. Aha. Knew you'd fall for that. Because he's a, the biggest child we have. Following the sounds of his voice, I made my way around one large piece of equipment and found Yoshiki hard at work. I found you. Okay. Yeah, you did. Jesus, okay. Um, good job, I guess. J just good job, in general. Was not expecting that, especially how you dressed. Uh, where's your shirt? I take it off when I have to work in or under consoles. Otherwise, it gets dirty. My skin is much easier to clean than my clothes. Fair, lo fair logic, really? I see. Hey, hey! What? Eyes up here, perv. Uh, no. No, don't, don't, don't insinuate things, okay? You're the one who's, you know, undressed in the workplace. But seriously, check it out. I can move my pec muscles. D do you want us to look or not? Uh, I had no idea you were so fit. Oh, please put your shirt back on. Please put your shirt back on. Fine. You're such a Spoil sport. He even has a sprite. Okay. Yoshiki took a moment to put his shirt on and straighten his braces. So what brings you here? So Do you need me to fix something? It wouldn't. It doesn't look like what you'd see underneath that. But so he hides it well. Actually, I was coming to see if you need any a uh, hand with anything. Really? Like putting your clothes on. Yeah. See, this is why we're best friends already. 
Cool. Want more proof? What color is my underwear today? Pink. Why not? How does that prove we're best friends? Best friends can always tell what color each other's underwear is by their mood alone. Well, you're positive, so I'm going to assume like a, a bright color. So still pink, I guess. Um, I, started in I stared intensely at Yoshiki, trying my best to judge his mood. What if it's a trick question and he's not wearing any? That's... Okay. Uh, his mood somehow correlated to his underwear color. Red. Black, what underwear? Yeah, I. Yeah, you wearing underwear? Uh, who are you trying to fool, Yoshiki? I'm your best friend after all. <laughs> you got me. See for yourself. No thanks. No. I quickly blurted out an objection to avoid getting an eyeful of Yoshiki's junk. No need. I'll take your word for it. Yoshiki seemed a little disappointed, but thankfully refrained from exposing himself. Without missing a beat. He tried to pick up where he uh, we left off with in the conversation. Speaking of underwear, I've actually just finished all of my work for the day. Okay, how is that? How is that link? How do those things even relate? Thank you, thank you. For you that. need to have more faith in the power of undergarments. What? Okay. Sorry, Yushiki, but you're still not making any sense. Yushiki just shrugged at me and went on his merry way. Let's go grab a bite to eat. I could go for an apple. That's the spirit. Cool. Yoshiki wrapped his arm uh, around my shoulder, and uh, he wait we headed to the kitchen from the engineering bay. What's going? Uh, before going in, Yoshiki stuck his head to see if the coast was clear. All clear. We have the green light to enter the building. So we're not supposed to be doing this. Okay. After uh, taking a look around the kitchen. We helped ourselves to some apples that we'd found in the fridge. So, wanna share clues for the game on Sunday? Sure, why not? I've shared it with everyone else so far. Hell yeah, I do. We are BFFs after all. I know, right? It's so awesome that we just get each other. I know this is a pretty rough thing to say, and the deletion game is like really bad, <laughs> but I'm so glad you're here. That's, thank you, That's. I think I'm pretty sure. That's the kindest and non-creepy thing you uh, anyone's ever said. Because, I mean, Beatrix has been kind, but it's kind of been in a creepy way. Like in a stalker way. Ah, thank you, Shiki. Ahem. You're directly between two girls and two boys. Okay, is that on either side? But it also means we can at least, we're not one or two or eight or nine. So that's good. Clearly I know how to party. Okay, uh, nice joke, us, okay. <laughs> uh, minus that melody is the right of Beatrix and the left of Kakashi. I'm so bad with puzzles. Uh, yeah, I'm not the best either. Shizuka's so good at games. I bet she already has the answer, which means she could target someone on purpose. OMG, she might kill me! Why would she kill you? Why would she target you? Yoshiki broke into a cold sweat. Well, you see, this one time... Yes, what? What did you do, Yoshiki? I ate some of the beans off her plate while she wasn't watching! Then how would she know if, you won't, if she wasn't watching? Wait, that's it? Yeah, but when she realized what I'd done, she said... <clears throat> You will rue the day you stole from me! Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe this is it. The time I'll finally regret crossing her. Well, here's the thing. There's two of us, it takes two hits. As long as we target one or two, or eight or nine, should be fine. Though, that does... Well, how about one or nine? Because that way we don't hit Melody. We'll either hit Kakashi... Or Beatrix. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yoshiki, um, I, well, I say that plan. I'm probably going to hit uh, go for five since it's in the middle. And it's probably us again. Yoshiki, that was an amazing impersonation of uh, Shizuka. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Say, everyone on this ship is better at games than me. Everyone on this ship is better at games than me. Okay. 
we're laughing, but we don't know she's a kid, so why would we find that funny? Oh, can you do it, other people? Uh, do me, do me. Say, by golly, I do love quantum mechanics. By golly, I do love quantum mechanics. Yep, sounds exactly like us. Aha, uh -huh. so you can obviously only do Shizuka's voice. <laughs> well, at least I tried. Ah, what am I doing? I need to go suck up to Shizuka in case she wants to murder me. Thanks for everything. Catch you later. I don't think she wants to murder you, but okay. See you later. Yoshiki ran out of the kitchen faster than I've ever seen him move before. Shizuka's threat seemed to be to have put him in the fear of God in him. Uh, I was pretty sure Shizuka w wasn't going to target him, but was something so petty, at least. I hope not. Um, come to think of it, maybe I should think about uh, sticking up to her too. After finishing my last apple, I decided to retire to my quarters for the day. If I actually wanted to suck up to Shizuka, tomorrow would be the, like, my last chance. Oh, beds. Uh, where have you been all my life? With this exclamation, I sank into the bed and fell fast asleep. The next day. These days are going really fast. I woke up with what felt like an, uh, an information hangover. It seemed my headache from earlier in the uh, in the week had started to return as the deletion game edged closer. It didn't have any time. I didn't have any time to waste. I only had one more day to acquire the clues I uh, needed to help me survive this round. Uh, who should I check in with today? Shizuka or I? Uh, Shizuka, why not? I haven't seen Shizuka in a while. I should go uh, see what she's up to. I looked at my tablet and saw that she was in the rec room. In the rec room, eh? I headed to the rec room where I found Shizuka uh, slumped in front of the TV. Hey, Shizuka. Shizuka didn't even turn to look at me. Uh, the only uh, perceptible signs that she had heard me were the slight uh, tilt of the head uh, and a vague mono uh, monosyllabic uh, reply. Huh? Yeah, hi. I sat down next to Shizuka and got a good look at what she was playing. What is this? It's Unicorn's Revenge. Uh, what is Unicorn's Revenge? Shizuka took quite some time to reply. She was clearly focused on the action unfolding on screen. From what I could decipher, Shizuka was controlling a unicorn as it hopped over a series of obstacles. It's an endless runner. A unicorn. Endless runner, I'm assuming. Rainbows. Uh, what? Oh no! She looks angry. She's gonna kill us now. A unicorn appeared to have uh, died upon making contact w with a briefly coloured uh, fat man. Shizuka dropped uh, her head down and let her entire body go limp. Did you die? Hey, are you dead? Shizuka rolled her head to look at, uh, at me lifelessly. What does it look like? It looks like a unicorn and rainbows and a fat man. You died. Yep. Of work too. Is there no save function? I'm sorry. She's a good. Took a deep breath and real. Uh, uh, really stayed in a heavy sigh. <sighs> Man, I can just start again. Okay. Uh, so what is Unicorn's Revenge anyway? Omg! You seriously don't know? Well, obviously, and we wouldn't be asking. She's a defeatist attitude was suddenly swept aside and replaced with a pure enthusiasm. Unicorn's Revenge is only one of the best games ever created. Eh, I'll have to see it to believe it. That good, huh? Yes, that good. Unicorn's Revenge is super retro. The game was created in like 2020 or something old like that by a game developer called Teofilo. So it's already out. That we should find out where we can buy it. It's an endless runner with light RPG elements, including skill trees and unlockable gear. Hold on, how can it be an endless runner and an RPG with a skill tree? The programming I managed to get my hands on wasn't even compatible with my system. After all, it was super old. But I was finally able to get it to run after fiddling with the source code. So yeah, so basically like playing, uh, playing like Pokemon Emerald on the Xbox. Probably. That's what, that's what it basically compares to, really. Uh, you know how to program? Of 
course I can. I'm the Everett's linguistics officer. Yeah, programming languages. I thought you'd be responsible for deciphering alien. Uh, I thought you'd be responsible for deciphering alien languages or something. Oh yes. Growing up, I received language education and studied linguistics in English and Japanese. Programming languages are surprisingly similar, however. Only those two languages for for for, for like Earth languages. In fact, I'd argue they're even easier, since programming languages are basically just a mix between language and math. Yeah, that makes sense. Programming is easier to understand than people, as I always say. Well, because that would make them predictable, I guess. Why would it be easier? Fuse could consider this uh, moment before responding. Well, when you're programming, you can read lines of a program's code and see at a glance why it's behaving the way it is. People, on the other hand, aren't so easy to read. Uh, it depends on who you ask, I think. Some people would claim that, obviously, people make more sense than robots or, well, as you said, programming. Shizuka, uh, Shizuka's candid remarks spoke volumes about how she reviewed uh, her interactions with other crew members. In spite of a, a bubbly and upbeat personality, it seems she still struggled with uh, as much as anyone else when it came to understanding people. Their thoughts, their motives, and, and their feelings. Unlike their logical, well-ordered programming languages, the human mind was messy and complex, defying easy answers. In an attempt to lighten the mood, I returned it to subject. I yeah, I returned it to subject uh, at hand. So, does Unicorn's Revenge uh, run well on your system? It does. Okay. Sometimes it runs into the odd glitch for whatever reason, but hey, what can you do? So then how can you blame us for when you, when you died? She just kind of shrugged indifferently. So is it safe to say uh, that this is your favorite game? Absolutely! Everything about it is magical! Unicorns, cupcakes, sparkles, glitter, you name it! Even the main boss, General Rainbow, is amazing in his own way! So... Okay, what? Okay. Wait, is this why uh, you have a unicorn backpack? Yeah. Did you make it? <laughs> no. Did Sora make it? Then how did you get one? The captain made it for my birthday a few years ago. Oh, the captain. Because she, she sews. The, the captain can sew? Yeah. She does most of the repairs on our clothes and stuff. We already knew this, though. But enough about that. Do you want to give Unicorn's Revenge a try? No. Sure. Here you go. Okay. She's gonna hand me your con uh, the controller. Okay. Just press the start button whenever you want to start the game. Okay. I think I've got it. Uh, it doesn't look too hard. As the game began, the screen displayed a, the, my Unicorn avatar moving across uh, the screen. Suddenly, an enemy appeared uh, from the right side of, and began making its way towards me. Uh, A button's usually the jump. Let's try B, though. Uh, Sig with panic, I looked at the controller and pressed the B button. Uh, the game, uh, because obviously if it's like Nintendo, the B and A are switched. Uh, and the game, they made a horrible sound before I ran directly into the, uh, the star and died instantly. <laughs> Oh, I died already. Why would you try to use one of your power-ups if you didn't have any equipped yet? I didn't even know what the button did. You still did better than Katashi. How did Katashi do? I didn't even get past the first enemy. Neither has he. Katashi still has trouble pressing start. What? Okay. <laughs> As she, uh, she's just left to fill the, the rec room, I, material, uh, I materialized nearby. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, hey I, what's up? The captain has requested your presence on the bridge. Her present or mine, or both? Okay, tell the captain I just need to finish up here and I'll be right over. So hers and, okay. Very well. I, uh, I bowed and disappeared, uh, just as suddenly as she appeared. Uh, work. Hey, before I head over, wanna share info for the deletion game? Yeah, why not? I've shared it with everyone else so far. Yeah, sure. Awesome! Let's see if you can do better in this game than you did in Unicorn's Revenge. 
I love a nervous laugh remembering uh, my game over screen from moments earlier. So my clue says that Beatrix is five positions to the left of Yoshiki. Interesting. Okay. So... Okay, so uh, that means I've got to aim for low numbers to avoid Melody. So it could be Katashi's nine, Melody's eight, uh, Beatrix is seven, and that gives you she either two or one. Ah, uh, no. So I gotta go for the middle. Uh, mine says that Melody is the right of Beatrix and the left of Kakashi. That's a great bit of info! How so? Awesome! I think I've almost got this figured out. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, although Shizuka's life was, uh, was clearly not on the line, it appeared that she could still get some enjoyment out of playing the game. Uh, noticing the time, Shizuka began moving towards the door. Sorry, gotta run. If I don't get going, I'll never hear the end of it from the captain. See you around. And I think with that, we should call it there. Thank you for stopping by, and hopefully you had fun. Um, and hopefully I can see you on the next one. With that, goodbye. <laughs>